the soul of a city is its people, its small shops, the diversity of the crowds, um, the hustle and bustle, but not just change, rootedness, neighborhoods, streets that maintain their identity over a long period of time. Cities are always changing, and it would be silly to say that a city loses its soul when it changes, exactly because so many new people come, old people live, businesses die for technological, cultural, and financial reasons. But uh, the soul of a city is often felt to be in the long-time residents, the old businesses, and particularly the small businesses, the small shops, the small streets, and the, the people who are not the richest, but they've been here a long time, and they give the city character. Every movement uh, always spurs a resistance to that movement, a counter-movement, a counter-culture. And uh, in our time, as in the 1960s, there was a big resistance against the standardization of overwhelmingly large organizations. In cities today, there's been an invasion since the late 1990s of chain stores. And these create visible faces of standardization. Some people have spoken of this in terms of the suburbanization of cities. And in some cities, I have to say, it's a benefit to have a chain store rather than um, an overpriced store with terrible merchandise that does not give a good deal to consumers in the area. But uh, in, in general, it's times of homogenization that irritate people, that get under people's skin and make them desire a, a more authentic kind of space to live a more authentic kind of life. I, you know, I, I can't emphasize enough how important laws are, zoning laws, rent controls, commercial rent controls, um, maybe providing apprenticeships for young people uh, who are not going to college or people who are graduates of art schools to set up small stores. Uh, a, a continuation of traditional crafts. I think industry is tremendously important in every city, even in New York. And there have to be spaces for all of these activities to create and procreate. It's, it's, it's silly to say that a city will survive on the basis of the creative class. A city only survives on the basis of diversity different classes of people, all working. And uh, it's, it's necessary for local government to make sure there is space for everybody in the city. Huh. I mean, there really have to be, you know, go, go to your city council representative, uh, you know, write to that person and tell them they, they voted wrong or they voted right on something. Um, utter, utter the, the forbidden words like, you know, new laws, new zoning, new rent control. Maybe uh, all buildings should have not just 1% for art, but 1% of the space devoted to mom-and-pop stores. I understand that these would not necessarily be old mom and old pop stores, but they'd be, you know, new independently owned stores. There, there really has to be an educational effort to, uh, to bring tastes together with social need. Like, look at the Red Hook food vendors in the ball fields. Um, they were unknown outside the Latino community, I should say the Latino soccer playing and soccer watching community, for almost 30 years when they sold pupusas and tacos and elotes and you know, whatever they were selling and making uh, at the ball fields. They never lived in Red Hook, but they came faithfully every Saturday and Sunday when the soccer leagues played and cooked and sold. And eventually, through the internet, through the food blogs, after around 2003, 2004, uh, a much wider public became aware of 
the, the good food and the cultural value, and I would say the social value of these immigrant food vendors. So uh, it, it, it became really crucial for politicians and for food bloggers and for you know, ordinary people who just liked tacos to put pressure on the city government to allow those food vendors to stay in place. There was a concerted campaign by the Parks Department and the Health Department to shut them down or make them conform to existing laws, which I understand. And uh, through the help of you know, outside communities pressing the city government, those food vendors were able to protect their right to sell in the park in Red Hook. But it's, it's, those, it's those cases that show how absolutely important it is for city governments to make good policies to protect people's rights to be in a place. Take the community gardens. Uh, they enjoyed a, a temporary reprieve a few years ago after Mayor Giuliani led a campaign to convert most of them to housing sites. And uh, you know, people breathed a sigh of relief and said, OK, great, now we have community gardens. But the community gardens are only legal until fall of this year, 2010. Uh, there has to be a New York state law passed by the legislature that creates a permanent right for community gardens to stay in place. I think everybody agrees that community gardens are truly important, not just as places of rest and relaxation and nature for a neighborhood, but also as places of vegetable production. You know, food pro urban food production is very important now. That's a sign of the sustainable environmental future. Uh, so there has to be some government action to protect that kind of space. It's these examples that show how important it is for all of us to press city government to make new laws.